everyone so um this week i wanted to make an extension to last week's video um last week we discussed um with my father um a little bit about what building a new norm looks like after you lose a loved one um because oftentimes those are the hurdles that we face and don't realize that's what we're facing um because you know depending on you know who you lost whether it be a parent a sibling um a family member a friend um you know a partner um depending on the kind of loss you experience you know and how connected you were to this person and how your routine perhaps you know had a lot to do with them then now that you know they're no longer here um, and you're pretty much you know going through your own grief experience you're having to build you know a new norm in terms of what is life gonna look like now without this person and in the beginning it's very difficult just because um, for some people you may experience that sense of shock that sense of numbness the sense of denial of not really understanding or wanting to be accepting of you know what actually has happened in terms of you know that person no longer being here um so for instance i'll put myself as an example um i often times felt that in in the beginning when i lost my mother i was pretty much looking to feel how i felt before she passed away and as i mentioned last week it wasn't until someone actually told me like listen unfortunately you're never going to have that norm that you had when your mother was alive um and after that person said that to me it was almost like a mental click like damn so now i have to what start all over um because for a long time you know um my mother was my mother and we had our own experiences but i served in a, a lot of parts of in her life as you know a caregiver because she did have um, her own medical conditions she did have also her own mental health conditions um so pretty much my life was pretty intertwined with hers um so when i lo longer had her it was almost like okay what's my purpose now um and honestly sometimes it does take you sitting down with yourself and saying what is my purpose now and that again is a question that most of us a lot of us can spend a whole lifetime you know searching for what the actual answer is um but some of the things that i know initially you know i had a hard time with um you know you're oftentimes trying to do the best you can because um, unless you've experienced loss before and even if you have you never know what to expect so for instance in the beginning I found that I isolated myself a lot just because I wasn't ready to face the world I wasn't ready to talk about really much anything um, I also resorted a lot to eating you know I've always uh, liked food but for some reason after my mom died, it's like food became that comfort for me. So I formed an addiction to food. So I wouldn't even have to be hungry and I would just, you know, want to eat. And it wasn't, you know, eating, you know, where it's like, oh, in the morning I'll have this or that. It was like I was intentionally like eating in a very unhealthy manner. Um, and it was almost like I was trying to slowly just take myself out pretty much and i say that with all honesty because again when my mother left i felt like she left a very big void i felt like you know who am i without my mother and even now when people come and talk to me and they still have you know their parents they tell me Lindsay, like i don't know what i would do if i didn't have my mom if i didn't have my dad you know i think i would personally die with them and the truth of the matter is that that you don't die <laughs> you know i'm still here so you do survive the loss um in terms of the pain and the agony yeah like initially you feel like i'm never going to be able to overcome this but with time di time does allow you to kind of not let go of the pain but the pain doesn't feel as heavy perhaps as you know initially and you know you kind of dance along with that because there will be times where anything can trigger you to feel how you felt you know those first few days when you lost um your loved one so it was a long time coming in terms of finding you know who Lindsay was um what made me happy what didn't make me happy um what were some of the things i was willing to give a try or to explore so in terms of finding who you are as a person after the loss of a loved one i realized that unless you take care of three major aspects of your life 
you're not really gonna be fully okay or able to continue you know processing the loss processing life as it comes at you so i realized that it's very important um in trying to heal from this that you take care of um your mental state which is very important that you take care of your physical state um, and you also take care of your spiritual state and now spiritual state um, can mean a variety of things for many different people it doesn't necessarily have to do with religion if you're not you know if you don't identify with any religious group um, it can just be like in terms of your inner self your guides the universe your creator whoever you believed to be that you know external higher power or even if you don't believe in a higher power you know it's like how do you become in tune and open to receiving you know whatever life has coming for you um, and in terms of mental state I found that the more I tried not to think about the situation or the more I tried to repress um, you know my my experience the worse it felt as time progressed so it does mean sometimes that you do have to seek professional help you know probably six months after my mom um, passed away I did seek therapy from um, a school mental health counselor at the time I was an undergrad um, and it did help me it did help me move along in that time frame just because my mom died when I was uh, in my second year of grad uh, undergrad so it was it was tough to continue because at that point I was ready to throw in the towel you know um, but I continued I finished um, but yeah even if you don't let's say are ready to see a mental health professional even having the support of someone that can be objective and provide you with unconditional regard um, you know, because we can have that in our family or in our friend system. But again, sometimes it's best to keep things separate and just seek out, you know, outside help. And sometimes people say, you know, it's too expensive to see a therapist or I don't really have access or whatnot. You know, Google is your friend. You can honestly research these things and find that there's clinics that will work with you based on your income. Um, there also are free services. Um, so those are things, are options that are out there for you if you're actually, if you feel like you're ready for that because you have to be in the mind state to say, you know what, the way I've been living is not necessarily working out for me right now, so I need some you know, extra support. So that's in regards to your mental state, as well as, again, surrounding yourself and being selective to surround yourself amongst people that you feel like will help you along your healing process, you know, that will be empathetic with you, will be sympathetic to your pain, um, that will help support you, you know, through those difficult times, um, and whom you feel like you don't have to put a mask on. Um, because sometimes that requires even more energy and work to be around people that you feel like you have to be the clown or the funny one or the, you know, uplifting one where it's like, no, sometimes you need people to just be there with. Um, and in terms of your physical um, overall well-being, I noticed that once I started running, um, it wasn't until 2017 that I actually like started to care about you know my physical health because as I mentioned I was eating in a very unhealthy way now my mom passed away back in 2011 so that's already what six seven years of unhealthy eating habits so I'll give you an example I would literally everyone that knows me knows I love and I'm obsessed with Dunkin Donuts now I do it in a different um, way but back then the way I used to order my coffee for instance I used to get a uh, medium iced coffee with seven creams sometimes eight and six liquid sugars now you don't have to be a doctor or a genius to know that that's pretty unhealthy especially when there would be days where i would have maybe perhaps two of those iced coffees every single day so imagine having that for an extended period of time i mean i remember going to a doctor's appointment and he literally looked at me and said you know you're borderline diabetic and honestly at that time i was so cynical and just fed up with life and my experience of you know not having my mom that i literally turned to him and i said well let me know when i'm post so um obviously that's that was very ignorant and absurd of me at the time but again when you feel like you have this void and you're just you know going through this pain and you don't 
see yourself getting better those are the kind of things that you disregard and it's almost like it doesn't become important where it's like okay if I die I die at least I get to be with my mom now and it's natural to feel like you want to be with your loved one but again then you have to tell yourself okay clearly I'm still here so I'm either going to make the best of it or I'm going to make the worst of it and me personally I chose to make the best of it out of out of me making the worst of it for so many years, I felt like I owed it to myself to give myself a fighting chance. And that was honestly a very difficult decision to come to. Um, because again, 97% of me just wanted to throw in the towel and be like, screw this, I'm just gonna await my own death. But um, obviously there was still that, you know, 3% that said, keep fighting. Um, so yeah, so I, it honestly started with me simply running and let me tell you, at the time, I was 200 pounds back in 2017. So the whole notion of even running for a minute had me looking and sounding and feeling like I was having an asthma attack. And mind you, I don't have asthma. So it did take time. It did take me, you know, keeping that consistency in wanting to to improve my health in, in some sort of form. Um, but it's funny because... In improving my own health, I realized that it also improving it improved my mental well-being. Where I felt like running was a time because it required such physical, you know, effort from my part, and it was something new to me, and it was something that my body wasn't used to. It did require a lot of, you know, endurance, and it was more mental endurance and physical endurance, just because I had to tell myself, listen, if you said you're going to run three miles today, you're going to run three miles and you're not going to give up. No matter if your legs hurt, no matter if you're out of breath, no matter if you're tired, you're going to like do it. And it was that mentality that helped me to focus in the moment to help me to, you know, forget about the pain, to help me, you know, forget about the distress that I felt. And little by little, I started seeing, you know, not only improvement in my physical well-being, but I also noticed improvement in my mental health well-being. So pretty much um, I've shared all this to say that you will survive the loss of your loved one, whether it be your mom, your grandma, your cousin, your brother, your sister, your friend, your partner, your spouse, whatever it may be, you will survive. And part of surviving is learning how to live without that person. And I know that's oftentimes a hard and difficult pill to swallow, but you will see yourself on the other side. You will see how, you know, years from now, you're able to look at the experience in a, in a different light, still with some pain, still with missing them. Um, and it's not to say that you're forgetting about them, but again, your life has to continue. And sometimes that's difficult to accept and you don't want your life to continue without that loved one. But remember that sh if that person were here, they would not want to see you suffering or an agonizing pain. And while at the moment it n may not be, you know, motivation enough to get you started in taking care of yourself, you have to take care of yourself because if you don't, nobody will. And these are the three areas that I found were the most critical just because, again, spirituality can mean so many things but just connecting with something just being able to say you know what for this moment i need to open myself up i need to be in tune i need to be aware i need to learn about myself i need to learn you know be able to connect with god if you're religious be able to connect with allah be able to connect with uh whatever creator or universe or spiritual you know realm you believe in it's just being in tune and just saying you know I have this pain. I don't want this pain to feel like it's going to kill me. Um, and it's just a matter of you will continue to survive. You know, it's just, it's not the load that's going to kill you. It's not the loss that's going to kill you. It's the way you decide to carry it. And while it may be difficult at first, and it is difficult at first, um, you know, things do get better. You will survive. And that's my message for you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found the information helpful. As I always say to you guys, I'm open to suggestions, feedback. So if you're interested in listening um, about any topics, just let me know. Simply leave a comment or email me. My email is fernandez.lindsay at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for the next week's video.